Next up is Amazon's Elasticsearch service, or Amazon ES for short. So just follow along and watch these videos if you don't have an AWS account already and you don't want to put your own wallet on the line here. These services do cost money. Mainly, I just want to give you an overview of how to use Amazon ES and what it can do and how to use it and what it's capable of. For the most part, Amazon ES is just a bare-bones Elasticsearch server with Kibana pre-installed for you. So if all you need is straight up Elasticsearch in Kibana, Amazon ES might be just fine for your purposes. It's a way to rent Elasticsearch capacity and only pay for what you need, instead of buying and maintaining your own servers. And if you already have your infrastructure set up within Amazon Web Services, AWS offers ways to do things like import data directly from their Kinesis Firehose service into an Amazon Elasticsearch service. Kinesis is a service AWS offers that is similar to Logstash or Kafka, and so they offer integration with Kinesis as an alternative. The main thing that's different between Amazon ES and a normal Elasticsearch cluster is how it handles security. So since it's hosted on the cloud, there are some extra hoops you have to jump through in order to securely attach to your Amazon ES cluster. So it has all the Amazon security stuff and identity access management stuff built into it, so that's the main difference that we'll wrangle with as we try to communicate with it outside of our cluster. Let's see how it all works. All right, so I've logged into my AWS account here personally, and uh, again, unless you want to spend real money here, I would recommend just watching me here. You don't have to follow along necessarily. So let's navigate to the Elasticsearch service in the AWS Management Console, and let's create a new domain. A domain is basically what they call a cluster in, in their parlance, shall we say. Uh, and we will do this just for development and testing. We don't want to spend a lot of money unnecessarily. One availability zone is just fine for messing around here. And you'll see that they don't actually support Elasticsearch version 7 yet as of this recording. Uh, when they do, you'll see 7 point something in this drop-down menu offered as another alternative, but really that's all I would expect to change as a result of that upgrade. So uh, we'll, we'll keep forging forward, shall we, even though we're on 6.5 still. We need to give our domain a name. Again, this is basically the name of the cluster. Uh, let's call it franks-es. And you can select the instant types you want to use. Uh, I'll just go with the defaults here and only one of them. Uh, as we talked about, you want to make sure that you have a beefy enough computer in terms of RAM. And generally, their default setting will be the right choice for you, unless you have some really unusual circumstances. You can also have dedicated master instances. This is recommended for production domains. In fact, you should have at least three of them in production. Uh, but again, we're not interested in spending money unnecessarily, so I'm going to leave that not enabled. But it is an option you'd want to consider in production. You can also choose the uh, characteristics of your storage. And again, sticking with the defaults here makes sense. Um, like we talked about, SSDs are a good choice for disk intensive operations such as Elasticsearch. So we will stick with that. And uh, 10 gigabytes, of course, is more than enough for our little experimentation here. Uh, if you were concerned about security, if you were actually you know, pushing secure or personal information around, obviously you would want to enable encryption. Uh, both in flight and at rest. Node to node encryption would be encrypted in flight and at rest would be enabling encryption at rest. So um, if you are dealing with real data and especially personal data, you do want to check those off for sure. Um, we also have the ability to do automated snapshots. So we talked about doing snapshots earlier in the course. You can automate those. So you automatically have a backup of your uh, indices at your disposal should the need arise to use them. So you can set that up here as well. Uh, by default, it's going to happen at midnight universal time. And we'll just uh, plow forward with the next button here. Now, I'm actually going to set up public access just to make it easier for us to connect to it. Again, if you are in a secure environment, you'd want to set up a VPC instead and keep your stuff within it. Uh, but since I actually want to access this from outside of AWS's uh, internal networks, I'm going to open it up publicly. But it won't be quite as scary as I'm making it sound because we will still lock it down to my IP address at least. Uh, one cool feature with Kibana, and as we'll see, connecting to Kibana can be a little bit tricky from the outside uh, due to all the security considerations. If you want, you can actually integrate Amazon's Cognito service with Kibana, meaning that you can log in with Cognito and use those credentials from Cognito to authenticate with Kibana. So if you're kind of all in with the AWS ecosystem already and you're using Amazon Cognito for user authentication, you can use that same user identity for uh, logging into Kibana as well. Now we are going to have to set up an access policy here. So let's uh, select a template. And we'll allow access to this domain from a specific IP in this case. I will just lock it down to um, 
my personal public IP address. Uh, first thing that I have to do, however, is figure out what that IP address is so I can go to a utility like uh, whatismyip.com or something. And I can see that right now my public IP that's given to me by my ISP is this. So I will just copy that and paste it in here. And that will automatically create an access policy that opens up uh, this domain, this cluster, if you will, to my individual IP address. And the syntax here is pretty easy to understand. I mean, writing it from scratch is not trivial, but um, once you see it in front of you, it makes sense. Basically, we're saying that uh, we have a version of this policy format. It's going to allow everything for Elasticsearch, but only from this source IP address, which is my public IP address. Um, and the resource name is this, which you might need for other purposes. So moving forward, we'll hit next again. And now we just need to review everything before we actually create the cluster. And we can just double check things, make sure they look good. I think they do. So let's go ahead and hit confirm. All right, so now we just have to wait for that domain to spin up. It has to go out and provision the hardware for it, boot that hardware up, install the software that it needs. So as it says, it will take about 10 minutes. So I'm going to pause this video and come back when that domain status no longer says loading, but says something a little bit more encouraging. One thing I would like to point out while we wait is this big uh, Create Firehose Delivery Stream button. As you can see, they're trying to guide you into using their Kinesis Firehose service to actually stream data into your new Elasticsearch domain here. That is their AWS ecosystem way of actually getting data from one place to another within AWS very quickly. Uh, so if you do have, you know, uh, web servers or something that are hosted within AWS on, say, EC2, Kinesis Firehose would probably be the simplest way to actually stream in those logs from your EC2 hosts into your Elasticsearch cluster. So you wouldn't necessarily use uh, Logstash in this situation. Within AWS, Kinesis Firehose might be the better choice. And if you were to click that button, it would guide you through the process of creating that connection between your EC2 hosts or wherever your data might be coming from. It could also be data that's just stored in logs in S3, for example and automatically stream that into your Elasticsearch cluster as it's generated. So that's kind of the AWS way of doing things. Anyway, we'll go back to waiting for this uh, domain to launch and then we'll start playing with it. 